Good evening, everybody. It's Steve with Real Progressives. Imagination. Imagination deficit. A lack of imagination. That is what our movement, that's what the people of America are suffering from today. Even right now, as we're seeing people fight for these really great, uh, like a federal job guarantee, and you're seeing stuff come about eliminating student debt, even in that, you've got people that are stuck in 1919. They're stuck in Eugene V. Debs' world of uh, the Industrial Revolution, and they have not ever left that world. And so to this moment, to this day, they're still continuing to try to reestablish the world of Eugene V. Debs. Eugene V. Debs had some great, great quotes, and he had a good mind for the time. But Eugene V. Debs doesn't really fit in modern society. He doesn't really fit the, the structure of the way our society is right now. And because of that, we end up stuck in this little myopic world where we, we don't see more possibilities if we took away the blinders and we were able to start dreaming a better dream, dreaming a bigger dream. As you look, you can think about some of the things that you and I might need or want, some of the things that we might need for our families, and some of the things that other people might need in this world. And there's no reason, no reason at all, that we can't make different decisions to fix those problems and to solve those problems. There's absolutely no reason we can't do that. We have the resources, we just don't have the ability to figure it out. We don't have the minds anymore to dream a better dream. And this is what happens when you have been lied to and gaslit for so long. So much of your life has been spent hearing about how we can't do things, we can't afford things. Everybody's predicting the demise of the world. Everybody's talking in fatalistic terms so people stop dreaming a better dream. Now, on one hand, people want to say that they're woke. They're so woke, they can't possibly talk about anything positive. They can't paint a picture of what a good society would look like. They can't paint a picture of what a transition from where we are today to where we are tomorrow. That's the problem. We lack imagination. We lack cognitive skills anymore. And I think a lot of that has been done to us by the powers that be, by the folks that are determined to rip and just destroy everything in their path for their own perp uh, selfish gain, quite frankly. And, you know, as we look at what our options are, you know, you saw last night, I think you saw last night, almost all the progressives got beat. Very, very few progressives made it through the gate. Why is that? Well, you can say the elections are rigged. You can even talk about the unfair party politics. You can talk about a host of things. But what I want to focus on, because I'm going to keep saying this over and over again, our power lies not only in our imaginations, not only in understanding the way things work in each one to each one, but our power lies in understanding that our power doesn't lie in politicians. We have to put pressure on politicians to be able to get things done. In order to put pressure on politicians, we have to have a coherent dream, a coherent vision of what tomorrow looks like. Because otherwise, we're just angry people and we're not asking for anything substantive and we're not going to get anything substantive. I think that you see all around this defi this like deficit of imagination, this deficit of possibilities. It's either burn it all down or it is just complete and utter conspiracy gibberish. There is nobody, very few people I should say, that are actually saying, hey, let's fight through this, man. I'm tired of letting these parasites control the narrative. I'm tired of them telling me what is possible and what is not possible. I'm tired of having my expectations and my needs put on the back burner by tone police. I'm tired of people that don't understand pain and suffering trying to tell people that do know pain and suffering to calm down, pipe down a little, suffer a little quieter. I'm tired of people of privilege talking to people that are suffering. Hear me loud. 
tired of people of privilege talking to those suffering and saying that they're toxic when they scream out. When you scream out from pain, when you're like hurting deep inside and you say, I need help, God help me, I need help. And people are like, quiet down there. You're a little too uh, disrespectful. We're not liking the tone. You hear that, all of a sudden, the imagination starts shrinking again. It starts continuing to shrink. And then all of a sudden, we're down to these very, very few possibilities. These myopic few possibilities. And that's all that we ever talk about. Just this little teeny myopic view of possibilities. And it's because of that deficit of imagination that people truly lose hope. When you have no ability to see a brighter tomorrow and all you can think about is the pending economic collapse and all you can think about is, oh my God, the earth is about to implode and you're not thinking, well, what can we do to fix this? How can we make this a positive journey? How can we save ourselves? How can we fix our world so that it's a better place for all? That requires imagination and it requires commitment and the unity that we need to make that happen also comes in understanding how things go. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to unify on the message anyway. I'll unify with the people, but I'm not going to unify on the message with people that have a deficit of imagination. I'm not going to unify with the people that refuse to consider. For example, right now, why don't you ever hear about universal dental care? I'm serious. Just think about this for a minute. Why don't you ever hear about universal dental care? Because it's not part of the acceptable answer to problems. You've got Medicare for all. But why don't you hear about universal dental care? Why don't you hear about a host of programs that we could do with 3D printing for housing, for shelter, for homelessness? Why don't you hear about 3D shelters, be, them printing out these 3D houses like that? Like in days, they have a whole village up. Why don't you hear about that sort of stuff? I mean, I know we hear about it, but we don't hear about it. It's not like front and center. Why is that? Why aren't we talking about a job guarantee amongst the people instead of paying money to people to go into the military? Why aren't we having a deficit? Why are we always like in deficit when it comes to considering the possibilities? I don't understand. I don't understand. Help me understand why we can't dream a better dream without the tone police coming after us, telling us to keep it in line, stay in the guardrail, stay in the boundary, stop dreaming too big, stop screaming too loud, stop being too noisy, stop saying those words we don't like, stop being mean, stop being angry, stop saying things that we don't like. Stay in the guardrails, only in the guardrails, and then too will be acceptable in our eyes. It's that tone police that keeps the people that really need help from speaking out. Now, there are a few that slip through the cracks, but I can tell you as one of those people that screams loud and proud, one of those people that is not afraid to get up in your face and go right up in your face and dish you, bam, right? People don't like it, and then they get all feely about it. But I can tell you right now, seriously, I don't trust the tone police. I don't trust them to fight for me. I don't trust them to fight for you. I don't trust them to fight for anyone because they're too worried about tone and, and, and this whole gentleman's approach, this whole, this whole uh, uh, country club aspect, this country club affect, this elitism, okay? This elitism that blocks us from having other ideas, thoughts that differ from the crowd, differ from the herd. Okay, the realm of possibility has been shrunken down to the point of like, it's so narrow. If that's all there is to live for, I certainly understand people checking out of not only the game, but out of this world. The narrowing of possibilities is extremely debilitating. It is extremely mentally abusive. It's gaslighting. When you diminish the realm of possibilities down to a scarce few things, like, I mean, what happened? Why is it fight for 15? Think about this for a minute. Why is fight for 15 the thing? Fight $15 an hour on a 40 hour week is like 33,000 a year. 33,000 a year in any 
decent place isn't enough to even get an apartment, much less freaking take care of a family, okay? 33000 a year is really, really not good pay. And it's really hard to survive on that. I mean, I guess if you have 20 people living in a house together, all making 15 an hour, they can kind of get by if they're willing to sleep in the corner of the room on the floor. But most people aren't able to do that, aren't willing to do that. So we need, we need a creative revolution. We need to revive the humanities. We need to revive what it means to be a family person, to come home, sit down at a table and have a meal with your family. We need to revive what it's like to read to your children. We need to read stories, fantasy books to our children. We need to be able to go out for a walk in the woods. We need to be able to enjoy one another's company. We need to be able to take advantage of everything around us, not just some things around us, but everything around us. Now, if you own a business, let me ask you this. If you have depreciation on a truck, your truck go, is now worthless after three to five years. Why is it that government expenditures don't have a depreciation on them? Why is it you can build a bridge 80 years ago and that bridge is still around? Why isn't it ever, ever taken out and then rebuilt? Why aren't we actually going out there and literally putting shelf lives on these schools and on these other things so that we can modernize and build modernization into everything? Why aren't we doing great things? Because we stopped. We're living in schools that are built 80 years ago with bomb shelters and everything else, freaking the, the old lead tile floors, you name it. I mean, it's horrible. So we as a nation, in order to get bigger, better, faster, stronger, have more robust life and get rid of these wars and get rid of all the fear porn that we live under, we have got to have a creative revolution, a cerebral revolution, and one that stops cutting out the realm of possibilities. And we need people that understand in order to get from here to here, there is no teleporting machine. We've got to have a transition strategy. You cannot just go, well, here's what we are today, and damn it, I won't accept anything but what's over there. I don't even know what's over there, but I'm not accepting anything but it. We can't live that way. We've got to have a bona fide transition strategy. But it all starts right here. We have an imagination deficit, and we need to fill the void. Now, in about 10 minutes, Jeffrey Ginter is going to be talking. Please stay tuned. 15 minutes till showtime. Jeffrey Ginter, 8 o'clock. The guy rocks it out of the house, and he has got a tremendous imagination, and he's got a tremendous heart for people, and he wants love to win. So please check out Jeffrey Ginter, 8 p.m., Real progressives. Have a good night, everybody. I'm out of here.